Tiny is the new big, and the downsizing movement is here to stay. This is so cute. Don't underestimate these tiny abodes. Wow. Woo! Awesome. There's a washer dryer right here. The sky is the limit when going tiny. Oh, oh my god. That's crazy. Micro lofts, check. Oh, ow! Backcountry retreats, check. Beach getaways, check. Whatever your dream is, Tiny can take you there. It's all about the art of the hunt. In this episode, we head to the Lone Star State, where one newlywed couple is looking to test the tiny waters. It's 360 square feet, that's really small. Without sacrificing the luxury they love. So is this the only living and sleeping space? Mm, that's a little different. With three unique homes to choose from, I'm a big fan of the chicken wire. We can just do this and keep her in the coop. <laughs> They'll have one tough choice. This is Tiny House Hunting. You know, I'm actually kind of glad it's raining, because that means I don't have to mow. <laughs> Texas natives Britt and Travis share a long history in high school, you broke my heart. <laughs> in our sophomore year, we dated, you know, for a month. After their short-lived teenage romance, the two went to different colleges, and Britt moved to Missouri to work as a photographer. Years later, when Travis settled in Fort Worth with a job in the oil industry, the couple reconnected and immediately knew that their first love would be their forever love. I decided to leave my job and move here to Fort Worth to chase him. Best decision you ever made. Best decision I ever made. They've always bonded over their passion for travel, though they do have a different way of approaching it. It would not be unusual for me to have a plane ticket and then not have a plane after that. He has it, like, in an Excel document, like, hour by hour, what we're going to do. And OK, we're gonna... day by day, or afternoon <laughs> by morning. <laughs> That might be my favorite. Home base is an 1,800 square foot century old craftsman style house that they bought in 2014. I'm gonna load the dishwasher. You got anything else? No, I'm good. We live in a historic area called Arlington Heights. It's a highly desirable neighborhood, so to make extra money, they've been renting it out occasionally. There's just one problem. When we allow other people to stay, we don't have a place to stay, <laughs> so. That's when it hit them. The market for real estate here is kind of insane. Property values keep going up, and we don't see them stop anytime soon. Their plan now is to move into a low-cost tiny home while they rent out their money-making larger home to pay for all their travels. Travis works several days a week in nearby Dallas, so he's open to living there while Britt wants to stay put in Fort Worth. We've really planted roots here with community and friends and a church. OK, I'm definitely available on Thursday. The couple reached out to Dallas-Fort Worth real estate expert Ariel Iglesias to help with their tiny search. Dallas and Fort Worth tend to be like night and day. Dallas is a lot more cosmopolitan, faster pace. Fort Worth is more laid back, a lot more Western theme. It's very common for somebody in the DFW area to live in one city and commute to the other city for work. Britt and Travis are looking to spend up to $125,000 for a low maintenance 500 square foot home. I'm just excited this day's come. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Britt's top wish is a bedroom that's separate from the living area, while Travis has his heart set on a nice patio for entertaining friends. Ariel starts the search in the Oaklawn neighborhood of Dallas, just two miles from the city center, to check off Travis's wish to be close to his clients. But she's also confident that the high-end home will have Britt considering a move to the big city. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi. Well, I know you wanted to see something in Dallas, so I brought you guys to the tiny contemporary. It's 360 square feet and under budget at $110,000. $15,000 under budget and an outdoor space. Yeah, but that's really small. Yeah, but it's really beautifully designed. Let's take a look, OK? I love this covered outdoor patio space. Uh, There's so much room for additional storage over here. Do these? Yeah, yep, those open oh, up. Yeah, that's cool. It's really beautifully designed inside. Let's go take a look. Oh, my goodness, these vaulted ceilings. So much great natural light. I'm actually like really impressed with the way the space feels. The first thing I saw were the vaulted ceilings. Vaulted ceilings in tiny homes are a perfect combination because the increased height makes a small area feel bigger than it actually is. 
but it's important to keep in mind that with that open feel comes more space to heat and cool, which can significantly affect energy costs. I like the subway tile. Trev, what do you think about the stove? It's kind of a little small. This is an electric. It might be a little challenging to cook a full-size meal on that. I don't really see that fitting our needs and see us needing a little bit more than that. The other appliances really make up for it. So this is actually a mini dishwasher. Oh, cool. Mini oven. And then right over here is actual washer and dryer combo. How cool is that? Both? All yes. in one. I didn't All even know you could one. do that. That's really cool. What's back behind here? So behind the pocket door is actually a full-size bathroom, guys. Check out that stand-up oh, wow. shower. Oh, wow. Curved glass. Huh. I do not understand the geometry behind that. So much room for activities. <laughs> Did you notice this open concept up here? Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. It's a little different, for sure. A little strange to be you know, sitting in the kitchen and someone's in the bathroom. There's just not a lot of privacy there. I really like the curved shower in the corner. It was a great use of space, but I really did not care for the open concept between the top of the wall and the ceiling. Maybe with all the extra money we'd have in our budget, we could raise it and close it up. That's an idea. OK. This is a really beautiful sleeping space. Mm -hmm. I like the way it's laid out. Good little sitting area. You know, I'm not really too pumped that it's a studio space. Would be a little bit challenging. Hey, Ariel, I noticed this over here in the corner. What is this? So this is a really cool feature, guys. Oh, wow. Oh. I definitely wasn't expecting this. Hey, Ariel, I noticed this over here in the corner. What is this? So this is a really cool feature, guys. Britt and Travis are minutes away from downtown Dallas, exploring an open and airy, tiny contemporary home with room for everyone. This is actually a dog house. Okay. So if you have guests or something like that who have pets, it would be a great space for them to put the kennel, and it opens up to the exterior. Tell you what, I've been in a few dog houses. Probably not one as nice as this. <laughs> The one thing I'm noticing here, though, is there's not really anywhere for us to keep our clothes. I was waiting for you to ask that. There's actually a full-size closet right this way. OK. Cool. I like this, how it saves space with that pocket door. That's really nice. And all the different shelves that you can go up and down, that's really helpful. A lot of storage space in yeah. there. Yeah. This is actually way more room than I was expecting in a closet space. This is cool. I like it. Yeah, this is great. The tiny contemporary is new, and I like that because it is low maintenance. But my favorite thing is that it's $15,000 under budget. Of course. So what do we think about the Tiny Contemporary? I actually really like how modern it is. I really like the fact that it's close to work and around where my customers are. The one downfall for me is that there's no separation in the living and the bedroom. I'd really like to see a space that might be a little bit closer to Fort Worth and also offers that separation in space. Of course, I have another place in mind. All right. So as we're driving through this neighborhood, what do you think? I like it. It looks like there's lots of cool restaurants, and it seems like everything's really nice and close. Lots of things you could easily get to, so I like that. I'm actually kind of surprised by all the trees. Yeah, so I'm hearing you say that you actually do like the Dallas location. OK, well, I don't know if I go that far, but I'll just say there's more to Dallas than I expected. Fair enough. Next up on the Texas Tiny Hunt Tour, Ariel brings the couple to a suburban home located in a family-friendly area between the big city of Dallas and the laid-back little big town of Fort Worth. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Country Chic. Hey, This home is 530 square feet, priced right on your budget at 125000 And I see it has, is that a two-car garage? It is additional storage. It comes with the property. That would be a great place to put my truck. Yeah. One thing that doesn't hit the mark is that the Country Chic has no outdoor space. The Country Chic has additional storage space that we were not counting on. However, it has no outdoor patio space. All right, let's go take a look. Wow. These wood floors. I love these walls. Look at how open this is. Beautiful. I wasn't really expecting that. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't seem like 530 square feet, right? No, not at all. Was this built in 1915? I see the window. You're right, Brittany. It was. So are these wood floors original to that? They are not. These are actually salvaged from an old building. Okay. There's a lot of history in this house. It I is. like that. We can go right this way to the main living area. I like that this is separate from the bedroom. Separate living space, yes. 
You're trying to get away from me, still, huh? <laughs> Always. So we have a vintage armoire over here. We have great okay. storage in this room. Oh. That'll be perfect. You can watch all your baseball games. And what's also great, the couch is also a sleeper sofa. This feels... Oh. This is great. They had the pull-out couch, and so we don't have to just use it for us. If we wanted to have friends here, or even if our family wanted to use it on a weekend, we could put four people in there. So you'll notice the I coffee like table in front of you. It actually um, functions as a storage space also. That's a good use of space. If you live in a tiny space, you have to get clever with storage. Furniture like beds, benches, tables, and sofas that serve double duty are a must when trying to keep necessary items hidden from view and maintain a simplified, clutter-free zone. It's a really nice kitchen over here. It is a huge sink. Would a tiny space need such a big sink? I feel like we could yeah. better utilize this with a range or a stove, because I know it's yeah. going to have Exactly. That's the only downside. You know, if we had to rearrange some things ourselves, maybe we could sure. do that. I think the kitchen could have had a little more to offer. All right. Well, there's a full-size bathroom. I'd love to show you guys. It's right this way. OK, sure. perfect. Let's do it. Oh, wow. This looks great. Yeah, this is a great space. I like the sink. There's a lot of space on the counter. These candle holders with the Edison bulbs, yeah. I think this is a really great addition. Oh, this is all storage back here. I really loved how they used a piece of furniture for the vanity. I mean, it gave it a lot of extra sink space um, and just brought a lot of character into that room. Let's take a look at the bedroom. Pocket door here. All right. Oh, this look is how beautiful, beautiful this is. Yeah. Pocket door here. All right. Wow. This is a really big room. Britt and Travis are in a suburban, commuter-friendly neighborhood right in the middle of Dallas and Fort Worth, checking out a tiny, country-chic, wood clappered home. And so far, they like what they see. The fact that you can fit a queen bed in here and a dresser and nightstands, but then you also have a totally separate closet space. I'm a big fan of the chicken wire, because yeah. what we can do, we can just do this and put her in here and keep her in the coop. <laughs> a huge closet space, great storage for us. The sleeping area was really nice. It was a lot larger than I expected. Great, all right, let's go downstairs and talk about what we've seen here today, okay? All right. So what do we think about the country chic? I really like it. I mean, I think it's got the separate space that we want. You know, the bonus is it's got that extra storage that we really weren't expecting. Yeah, for me, the big negative is that it does not have an outdoor space. We still have one more place to go to, guys. Let's go check it out, okay? okay. All right. The garage was a definite bonus for me. With it being right on budget, I thought that was a great feature. The location of the country chic isn't really ideal. Like, it's halfway between Fort Worth and Dallas, so it's kind of in this in between. And so regardless of what we're doing, we always have to drive. I don't really know that I like the idea of it being in between. So far, Ariel has shown Britt and Travis one tiny home in Dallas and another between Dallas and where Britt hopes to live in Fort Worth. But living where she wants will come at a cost. Hey, guys. What do you got for us? So I brought you to the White Cottage. 450 square feet at 150,000. 150. It's a little bit over what we were thinking budget-wise. Guys, this place has a lot to offer, okay? Let's go take a look. Oh, wow. Oh, I see why you brought us here. Yeah. Nice. I love these great. open cabinets and the way they use glass. Oh, check this out. That's cool. Nice cutting board. Yeah, so it's like multi-use. You get a little bit of extra countertop space. Even though the kitchen is, is relatively small, it felt a lot bigger than it actually was. I really like the floor. It's not hardwood. No, but it'd be really easy to keep clean because of the color. Yeah. There's even a full-size dining space. Oh, that's cool. Look. Oh, it folds up? It even folds up. I could totally see a seat and breakfast here. Eating a few tacos. You know, we'll Talking coffee. about our feelings. <laughs> right over here is the main living and sleeping space. So is this the only living and sleeping space? Unfortunately, it is. Mm, that's a little different. Yeah, I was really hoping for separate. Well, maybe we could figure out a way to do like a Murphy bed or even like a pull out. Having a tiny home, we have to be creative. And this space is great to, uh, to be creative with. 
have some extra storage space with the hutch. Yeah. This is some really great extra there's storage space. There's a lot space. of storage space in here. Yeah, it's perfect. And there's actually some additional space over here with the closet. Oh, oh wow, that's a big closet. Huh. I'm actually really surprised. I, you know, when you told us 450 square feet, I was kind of expecting us to feel like we're in a shoebox, but this is actually really open and it feels like a really large space. And speaking of larger spaces, there's actually a full bathroom. It's very spacious right this way. Okay. It's a full size shower and tub. The bathroom is actually a lot larger than I thought it would be. You could actually fit two people in there really comfortably. There's really great storage too under the sink, and I like yeah. how they have the drawer. It's mm -hmm. a really cool vanity. They even have some additional space right over here. It's a hot water heater closet, but we can oh. totally add some shelves. And... Well, I have one more thing to show you, okay? Oh, okay. all right, let's go do it. All right, Travis, you wanted an outdoor space? Here it is. This is incredible. It's almost like double the space. It this is. feels like it's the same size as the inside. I can work out here. You can work inside. That would be great. Always leaving me inside. And guys, we also have this additional entertainment space right behind you. I definitely wasn't expecting this. This reminds me of having like bonfires growing up and stuff. We enjoy the outdoors and love a good night outside barbecuing. And so the outdoor space made me feel right at home. Without a doubt, this is my favorite part of the property. Okay, so what did we think about the white cottage? I really love the space. It's really open, it's beautiful inside, lots of good storage. I really love the outdoor space. It did it for me. I am really concerned though that it is $25,000 over our budget. We've got a really big decision to make. We gotta figure out which well we wanna draw water from, huh? Let me know what you guys decide. Cool. cool. 1,800 square feet to 360 square feet is a huge adjustment. Do you really think you can do that? Do you really think you can? Man, it has been a crazy day. It has been. We've seen some really great properties, though. Ariel brought Britt and Travis all around the Dallas-Fort Worth area to see three tiny homes that each have big-time appeal. A stylish, tiny, contemporary studio in Dallas, a cozy white cottage in Fort Worth, and a country chic home right in between. Now it's time to make a tough decision. What are you thinking? I love the way the country chic is laid out inside. I love the additional storage space. That was a big bonus for us. House 2, with its turn-of-the-century charm, has a spacious 530-square-foot interior with a separate bedroom and the added bonus of a two-car garage. It's right on budget at 125 k but its neither-here-nor-there location is less than ideal, and the home has no real yard. At the end of the day, it has no outdoor space, and that is a huge deal-breaker for me. Honestly, I'm kind of okay just getting rid of that one altogether. Cut. Okay. Hey, we Easy. are great decision-makers. Seriously. Okay, right. so two left. I really love the tiny contemporary. With its beautiful covered patio, House One in Dallas comes in 15,000 under budget at $110,000. It has a sleek modern style with clever areas for storage. The problem is that its extra tiny 360 square feet would need significant costly renovations to suit Britt and Travis's needs. The White Cottage is way more spacious at 450 square feet. The 450 square foot House 3 near Britt and Travis's current home in Fort Worth is loaded with storage options, space-saving furniture, and has a large yard with lots of potential. However, there's an all-in-one living and sleeping space, and at 150,000, it's $25,000 over what they plan to spend. I really think that adjusting from 1,800 square feet to 360 square feet is a huge adjustment. Do you really think you can do that? Do you really think you can? I do. I mean, if we're talking about this idea of going tiny, there's an opportunity to just get rid of excess clutter. I agree, but you can do all of those things in the White Cottage. It gives you more space. It still gives you the storage. On top of all of that, it gives you that amazing backyard space. You can't tell me you don't like that. It's $25,000 over the budget. That's a lot of money. That is a big deal. I guarantee you we've accounted for all the costs of renovations and all the costs of gas to get to and from Dallas. You have far exceeded the difference in the cost. If you think that we can make up that $25,000 by renting out our main house and going tiny, I can get behind your decision. Did we just buy a tiny house? We just bought the white cottage. OK, let's call Ariel. Let's do it. <laughs> Ow. All right. You think that'd be a good weekend to go to Nashville with Denise and Austin? 
Yeah, I think that'd be really fun. Our tiny home is awesome. Our life has changed in a big way. It's allowed us to save for a trip. And I'm super excited for Britt because she's never been to Europe. So we're, we're just jacked up to go there. I have to grab lunch next week with Mr. Wickland. Could you come along? I was really nervous about having a studio space where the bedroom and the living space are all combined in one. But um, we've actually really enjoyed kind of being forced into one space together. I mean, we did get married, right? So. That's right. <laughs> Heck yes. OK, you want to take that? We really feel a sense of home here in Fort Worth. We feel like we're really planting roots here. While it is a little bit longer commute, two or three times a week to get home, at the end of the day, it feels simpler. Cheers to thee and our new tiny home. So we love to have our friends over. Hello! Hey, good morning. Good to see you. I love what you did. Yeah. This is gorgeous. Look at that lid piece. That's, that's great. Oh, yeah. We've got a little brick in the rain. I want to show you guys the best part of this whole thing. My favorite part still is the outdoor patio space. I enjoy just grabbing a nice drink and just relaxing. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. To many memories. That's right. It's just been way beyond what we ever dreamed it would be. Whether the goal is owning that first home or even a vacation getaway in a far-flung location, hopeful homeowners everywhere are questioning how much living space they really need. And when building isn't an option, turning to the real estate market can make tiny homeowning dreams come true in a big way. And then if you want to take a look, it's a vintage 1920s built-in desk. I could definitely see myself sitting here. If you've ever wanted to live the simple life in a tiny space, you'll be amazed. Wilderness locations, urban habitats. When buying a property under 500 square feet, ingenuity rules and freedom follows. This is a little tight. I think it looks like a perfect fit. That's Tiny Living. She's smiling so big. Yes. Drew Smith is a Navy man who met his bride-to-be Libby during a chance encounter back in their home state of Virginia. We had some mutual friends, and they ended up inviting us over to her Christmas party. She showed up in a tacky Christmas sweater, and it wasn't a tacky <laughs> Christmas sweater party. So. I think I missed that memo. After recently tying the knot, Drew's job as a Navy physician relocated them and their two dogs, Lucky and Lily, into a downtown apartment in San Diego. We really need to get a house with a yard. It'd be so nice to just open your door and just let the dogs out. Mm -hmm. Drew and I have been living downtown, and it's been a little difficult with two dogs. It's been hard not having our own yard. We've had to travel to lots of different dog parks, beaches, to get them space to run around, so it's been a challenge. With the average home prices in San Diego hovering around half a mil, buying a house near the beach is too pricey for their $450,000 budget. And they'd like a smaller place that's around 700 square feet. It's such an expensive real estate market out here in San Diego that I think it's really vital that we go tiny. Don't you think we can stretch the budget a little bit? <laughs> I don't know. I think 450 should be our max. I don't think we can go over. I would really like to have something that's move-in ready. I don't really want to do a lot of work. We might be able to find one with some vintage charm, though. It doesn't have to be completely updated. Drew and I differ a little bit on style. I'm really looking for a house with a lot of charm, and his style is a lot bigger and bolder. Drew's Hospital is located at Navy Base San Diego, the largest Navy base in the US. It's right along the city's downtown harbor with lots of restaurants and cultural attractions nearby. So to keep the commute short and stay near the action, the Smiths have pinpointed an historic residential area they like called North Park. It's just up the freeway from downtown, has a wide mix of styles, and is adjacent to historic Balboa Park. Mitra Amame is a local realtor who will help the Smiths navigate North Park's real estate market. I really love the efficiency of living in a tiny home and really not accumulate that much stuff, which is a really nice way to live. House One was built in the 1920s and has undergone a recent renovation that saved a lot of the original details. This is a Landis. very close to the park, which I knew Libby really liked. Oh, that's so nice. We can walk the dogs there. So it's coming in at 500000 
and it's 700 square feet. That's about 50,000 over our budget. I know, but it's a good size. Oh, it's nice. And it's really unusual to have a dedicated living room in a tiny house. I love the hardwood floors. These are nice. These are fairly new wood floors. The past owners uh, replaced them all throughout the home. And then over on your right, Libby, if you want to take a look. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's perfect for you. It's a vintage 1920s built-in desk. I could definitely see myself sitting here and pulling up a chair and doing some work over here. And I love this big door. We could just open these up and have a big indoor-outdoor living space. And you get a great cross breeze there, so it's great for the San Diego weather. I wish that the kitchen was open to this living space. I love to be in the kitchen cooking and talking to my guests at the same time. I can tell right away that the house is going to be bright and light and airy. It's a real indoor-outdoor feel, which I love. So here we have the formal dining room which again is really unusual for a tiny house. It's got some great vintage features. I can see us having dinner parties here. It's a tiny house, but there's lots of rooms that I can see us using. Look how much light comes through these windows. It's so bright. You know, these windows, they're not really energy efficient. I think we'd have to replace those, and that's more money, and we're already over budget. The one thing I don't like are the windows. I just don't like the style of them. So here you have a vintage kitchen. The great thing about this kitchen is it has a ton of cabinet space, so a lot of storage. My favorite thing is how open it is. I love the color of the backsplash and all the little vintage details it has. This kind of looks like my grandmother's kitchen. If you don't like this tile, then why are you wearing the exact same color? <laughs> Nitro, where's the dishwasher? There isn't a dishwasher. The dishwasher is right here. <laughs> I don't know about that, hon. But there is a huge farm sink with ample space to do dishes. Oh, it's so cute. I really love the vintage feel of the kitchen, and I love the color of the backsplash. It's very California. The only thing I liked in the kitchen was the sink, but everything else needs to go. Well, here is the master bedroom. It's got a great feature of the window coverings, which are plantation shutters. They're very energy efficient. That'll be huge, having those savings. Yeah, I really like these. They add a lot of character to the room. And it's got a custom closet already built in for Libby's shoes. I think all my stuff can fit in there. I don't know what you're going to do. It's a pretty good size. I was really hoping to fit our California King in here, though. I don't know. It's, it's a little tight for that. The master bedroom had a decent-sized closet, which isn't always what you get in a tiny house. And I also liked the plantation shutters. I thought they were a really unique feature. Oh, it's so nice and bright in here. This is a perfect space for a second bedroom. Got a great view of outside. When our friends and family come visit from the East Coast, this will be a perfect place for them to stay. You guys ready to see some more? Oh, I love all the details in here, Drew. Wow, this is really nice. Look at this beautiful clawfoot tub. You like to take baths. Let me try it out. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if you fit. <laughs> I don't know about this. <sighs> yeah, yeah, but this is uh, a little tight. I think it looks like a perfect fit. <laughs> I don't know about that. I didn't fit in the tub, and it would just be another renovation to add to the list. This is uh, a little tight. I think it looks like a perfect fit. <laughs> I don't know about that. The Smiths love San Diego's North Park neighborhood, and this restored 1920s craftsman has original built-ins and all the vintage charm Libby is after. But even though Drew likes the idea of downsizing their life into 700 square feet, he's still a big dude. Looks good. Looks all like right, let's fit. get you on out of there. I really loved all of the details in the bathroom, especially the clawfoot tub and the tile work. I disagree. I think there's just too much work to be done. Oh, wow, Lib. Oh, my gosh. It may be a tiny house, but it comes with a big backyard. Mitra, this is beautiful. I love this outdoor entertainment area. I could totally see all our friends hanging out here. Yeah, definitely. And I love the yard. The dogs are going to really enjoy it. And look at that cute hummingbird over there. Yeah, I love the space. I guess the only the downside to that is a lot of maintenance uh, as far as maintaining the gardens and then water bills. You know, it's, it can add up. It can be pretty expensive. I think the outdoor space in this house is perfect. It has a big entertaining area and grass for the dogs. It's really everything we wanted. The only downside to it is it requires a lot of maintenance. The house needed lots of updates, like the kitchen and the bathroom 
both needed renovation. It's just, it's not in our budget. I don't think the Landis needs any work at all. I just loved all of the charm of the house and it was so vintage. It was exactly my style. Not to mention that big back deck where I could definitely see us entertaining our friends and it had that green space for the dogs. Mitra has another option in the North Park area that's even closer to Balboa Park than House One. The historic park was founded in 1868 and most of the buildings along its wide promenade feature architecture in the Spanish colonial style. Dotting its 1,200 acres, visitors also discover some 16 unique museums. So guys, how are you like in the neighborhood? I love it. It's so close to Balboa Park. And it looks really walkable. So here we have the Colonial. It's 450,000, so right in budget. It's 600 square feet, and it's got an attached garage. I love right. this fence. This would be perfect for the dog. Yeah, great space for him. I immediately noticed the picket fence. It looks like something we'd find at home in Virginia. It adds a lot of charm to the house. We were hoping to get a house that was about 700 square feet, and it's a little bit smaller. Here's the open floor plan you were looking for. And it's got the updated windows that are energy efficient. Oh my gosh, is this a wood burning fireplace? Yes, it is. It's a working fireplace. I don't know that I would put the couch right there, but we do have a couple of big chairs. We could yeah, maybe reconfigure. Could maybe put them like there and there, even though you can't see the TV then. So you have to figure that out. But this house has a really open layout that really appeals to me. I really like the energy efficient windows. They're already in place and they don't need to be renovated. Look at all this counter space. This is what I'm talking about in the kitchen. This is updated. I mean, look at these nice new cabinets, the granite countertops. It's even got a dishwasher, which is perfect. For a tiny home, it's not a tiny kitchen. Not at all. The only thing is, where's the dining area? Well, one idea is to put a bistro table here with a couple of chairs. I like to cook and entertain guests at the same time, and this tiny space is not going to work for us, I don't think. I really like the updated appliances and the granite countertops and the new cabinets. There's really nothing that needs to be done there. The kitchen is so big for a tiny house. I could definitely see myself cooking in there. But there's really no designated area to eat and entertain. So the current owners are using this as a formal dining room. But it is technically a second bedroom because of the closet space. I think the reason why it works is because you have these beautiful French doors that open up to the living room, and it just creates like more of an open space. I do like the French doors. It adds a lot of character. But we really wanted a second bedroom for when friends and family come to visit, and using it as a dining room, it's not what we had in mind. The second room's a little awkward. I was really hoping to use that as a bedroom or a place for storage. We knew we were going to have to compromise on some things, but we didn't really realize how much we would have to compromise. Here you have your updated bathroom. The Smiths are checking out another renovated craftsman home with good 20th century bones in San Diego. And Drew likes how the original details in this option have been replaced with more contemporary materials. At 650 square feet, it's right on budget at $450,000. This is a huge bathroom for a tiny house. This is just what I wanted, the granite countertops. Nice cabinets. I mean, this is done. There's no renovation here. And I really like how this area is separate from the bathtub and the toilet. I still don't know if I can fit into that tub. <laughs> I don't either. All right, guys, let's check out the master. OK. Well, I think this could work for us. It's nice and bright in here. And it's got a really generous closet. I don't know if we could fit the California king, but we could stick to a queen. Bedroom. The space is a little small. I'm realizing that since the houses are so small, we really have to be creative with space. So I'm really excited to show you this. Oh, wow. It's pretty big. And the great thing is it's low maintenance and cost effective because you won't have to water anything. I like that. Love this sunshade. This would be perfect for us. Yeah, we could put a big table out here and entertain guests. Mm -hmm. I do wish there was a little bit of grass for the dogs to run and play on. I really like the outdoor space because it requires little to no maintenance. It does have a nice fenced yard for the dogs. I do wish it had some green space for them to run and play. The 
one nice thing about it is it's right on budget for us, but I was really hoping to have a second bedroom for the storage and potentially for when our family and friends come to visit. I think it might be a little unusual to use a bedroom as a dining room. It's just not what I picture. With the last place giving the Smiths some layout issues, Mitra thinks she's got something that's sure to impress, and it's 25K under budget. Hey guys. Hey Mitra. Hey Mitra. How do you like the neighborhood? It's nice to be on a cul-de-sac, it's really private. So I'm excited to show you this house. It's called the Oasis. Coming in at 425,000, so it's under budget. Perfect. And it's a little bigger for a tiny house at 750 square feet. Oh wow, Perfect. it's nice and spacious. So let's go check it out. All okay. right, can't wait to see inside. Look at this space. So it's got a huge living room. Yeah, this is a massive couch. I'm pretty confident we can fit our furniture in here. And it's got huge picture windows. This is really nice. Wow. This house sits really high. Is that downtown? Nice. And I like this mantle. We could really personalize it, add some nice charm to the space. Mm -hmm. And it's got a TV for each of you. I love that. This is perfect for me. I could see myself spending a lot of time here, I think. I can too, Drew. <laughs> I'm not sure about this carpet, though. Oh, that's an easy fix. The original okay. hardwoods are underneath, so you can just pull up the carpet and refinish it. Yeah, that would be probably better for the dogs. I really enjoyed all of this space. There was two TVs, and I could really see myself spending a lot of time there. The style of this house, it's very bold and masculine because it's just like a big man cave. Oh, wow, honey. This is pretty nice. It's OK. I can see how it has all of the things we need. Yeah, it's got custom wood cabinets, granite countertops, and all of the amenities. Lots of storage space mm -hmm. for a tiny kitchen. Even as a small TV, that's perfect. <laughs> I do like how this space is open to the living room. It's also got a dining area just off the kitchen. Gosh, this looks a little tight, Drew. It's OK for the two of us, but we certainly couldn't have our friends over here. Uh, honey, I don't know. I I could get used to this. I think we can make this work. All of the appliances were new, and it looked like there was little to no work that would need to be done. And plus, there's a little TV in there, so I don't have to miss any TV time. The kitchen in this house is a little bit eclectic for my taste. I just wish there was a bigger designated dining space. Here's the master bedroom. OK, Mitra, this is huge. It's one of the bigger bedrooms I've seen in a tiny house. Yeah, this is a big space. I think we could fit our California King in here. And a couple of side tables. And look, hon, another TV. <laughs> it's pretty nice. There you go. The master bedroom does have that carpet I despise, but at least it has two closets that are pretty adequately sized. All right, guys, here's the bathroom. Oh, wow. This is totally updated. Yeah, and it's a really nice size. I think it could even fit in that tub. This is the second bedroom. They have it set up as an office right now, but it's easily converted into a bedroom. I think this would work for us. Yeah, I think so. Well, I'm really excited to show you guys the outside, so let's go. OK. All right. <laughs> Whoa, this is awesome. There's a pool. Whoa, this is awesome. There's a pool. They could do laps in there. Yeah, it's one of the biggest pools I've seen in a California home. In sunny San Diego, the Smiths didn't originally want a pool, but now that Mitra has whipped one up with this modern home for $425,000, it's an enticing option. And Libby, this is your outdoor dining room. This would be great for entertaining. And over there is a grassy area for the dogs. They would love that space. And there's another space for you guys to hang out. Oh my gosh, this wow. would be so relaxing. I was blown away by the size of the backyard. I could see Libby and I spending a lot of time outside, enjoying the deck and enjoying the large pool. The pool is a nice surprise, but it's going to be very expensive to maintain. With a lot of good options near downtown San Diego to sort out, Libby and Drew find a quiet bench in historic Balboa Park and start hashing out their final decision. So let's see if we can narrow down the list. I think both of us are kind of up in the air about what to do with that second room in the Colonial. House 2 is an updated pre-war option that's right on budget at $450,000. A picket fence protects a grassy front yard for the dogs, and Drew liked the modern updates inside. Let's move on to the Landis and the Oasis. I think we should go with the Landis. 
I could totally see us there. House One is another pre-war that's over budget by 50K. A recent restoration saves some original built-ins and the overall historic character of the place. It has all the vintage charm that I love. The Oasis just had so much to offer. House Three earns its Oasis nickname for its party-ready pool and outdoor lounge. And the best part is that it's 25K under budget. And the house is bigger than all the other houses. But think about the Landis. All the details in the house add so much to the style. The tile work in the bathroom, that clawfoot tub, and the wooden front doors that open to the outside really create that indoor-outdoor living that I love. Yeah, and go in big-time debt. That house is way over our budget. I really love the Oasis. The outside space was just unbelievable. That pool, that huge deck, and the views were, were incredible. You're the one that was concerned about the landscape in the Landis, but you're talking about a pool that would require a ton of maintenance. Maybe we should reconsider the Colonial. It's kind of a good compromise. It does have an open floor plan that I really like. And the location is ideal, close to the park. I know we're not sure what to do with that second room, but maybe we should use it as a dining room until we have family and friends come to visit. It's move-in ready, and it's the perfect price. I think the Colonial's our house. I think so. The Smiths decide to resurrect house two as a great budget-friendly compromise. Cheers to our first house. We really love this place. It's, it's worked out great for us. It was on budget, which was a big thing for me, and it's updated, so there's no work to be done, which has been great. And I've been surprised at how big this place feels, having the front yard and the backyard and the open concept of this house. We got the porch we wanted, the space that we need. Oh, this is the perfect front yard for the two of them. One issue that we had with this house was the lack of a designated eating area. But we ended up using the second room as the dining room. And when friends and family come to visit, we're just going to put a air mattress in there, and it'll be the perfect space for them. There's no way we could have done this downtown. Being able to be out here with the fire pit and this nice patio. Even though we didn't recognize it right away, this ended up being the perfect home for both of us. The footprint of the home is smaller than we originally wanted, but since we use the outdoor space so frequently, it ended up fitting our lifestyle really well. Lily, do you like the backyard? You do? Going tiny has been great for us. It had its challenges, but we have no regrets. Lucky, what do you think, bud? Are you a fan? Do you approve? I think he does. Yeah. I'm looking for something tiny. I'm a tiny girl. Wow, this is beautiful. And it feels so classic Philly. The character and history of Philadelphia called Nikki and Tomislav back to the States after years of living abroad. Oh, wow. This is tiny. You'll be in the bathtub, I brush my teeth, and then we switch spots. But finding a tiny home that suits them both could derail their homecoming. It's over budget and kind of just like an extra space for me to clean. Well, yeah. Smart buyers everywhere are discovering that smaller homes mean bigger lifestyles. If you've got what it takes to live in 500 square feet or less, ingenuity rules and freedom follows. That's tiny living. What about Old City, where we used to hang out back in the day? Yeah, that was pretty awesome. World travelers Nikki and Tomislav are putting down tiny roots in the city of brotherly love. Tomislav and I met in Philly when Tomislav was on a work and travel program, and we were both working at a restaurant. We met on my first day, and it was love at first sight. After a whirlwind five-month romance, Tomislav returned to Croatia, and a three-year long-distance relationship followed. Finally, Nikki moved over 4,300 miles for love, and the real adventure began. Marriage, two years living in Croatia, and another two in Slovenia. We spent four years in Europe, and now it's time to spend a bit of time in the United States. Leo, do you want to stay with Aunt Nikki and Uncle Tislav? Uh-huh. With jobs lined up at the same company outside Philly, Nikki and Tomislav packed up for the States. We have to find a park by where you guys are going to be. I know. They moved in with Nikki's sister, Domenica, and brother-in-law, Paul, in the burbs while searching for their own place downtown. <laughs> I got you. 
One thing that was great with us moving here from Europe is that we had to downsize. We moved from country to a country before and we know um, how Getting the process goes. Getting rid of stuff really feels good to just like get rid of as much as you can and only live with what you need. They agree that living tiny fits their lifestyle, but how tiny is still up for debate. I want to live in a space that's just the right size for us, and 500 square feet would be perfect for me. So I think our ideal size would be somewhere around 700 square feet, because I think we need to have a tiny bit of separation, you know? We work together, we're driving to work together every day, and I just want to make sure that I have my own space. Location is key for these two, and to go tiny in a trendy Philly hood, they've budgeted 300K. So around 300, 350? Uh, no, the budget's 300,000. <laughs> I could spend a tiny bit more if we find the uh, place. I don't think so. I think we uh, agreed on 300,000. <laughs> we don't want to be house poor. We want to be able to travel, and we want to be able to go out to eat and still live our lives. Listen, an awesome property just came on the market. Helping these two international lovebirds find middle ground is local realtor Rachel Riley. Philadelphia's market has always been really strong, and there's lots of great little neighborhoods, lots of historic sites, lots of green space. It's beautiful. I really hope that we'll have a cute place, though, with that, like, European vibe. As their tiny house hunt begins, Nikki and Tomislav can't hide their enthusiasm. Want to give me a beat? For Philly's rich American history. Yo, what's up? We're here in the streets of Philly, and I'm here with my man Willie, William Penn, you know, from Pennsylvania, up in the city of the Philadelphia. Oh, 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 Philly, go Philly, go Philly. It's not all cheesesteaks. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel found the first property in Old City, a neighborhood loaded with 18th century charm. You know Old City? Yeah, we used to work right around the corner. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Both of us. That's awesome. Well, we're going to see a unit called The Loft. We have some real beauty across the street, the Betsy Ross house, very picturesque. Oh, wow. A little grittier on this side of the street. Yeah, a bit scaffolding and garbage, but I guess that's for sure. city for you, so. Well, I know you're gonna love the size of this, especially Thomas Love. It's uh, 750 square feet. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's a little bit over budget at $350,000. Okay, I don't know how we're gonna manage with. Yeah, we'll, we'll find the money. <laughs> This building used to be a hoop skirt factory and was converted into condos. Oh, wow. Nice. Wow. This is amazing. I'm just obsessed with these windows. This is awesome. You just like see old city, all it's of beautiful. it. It's beautiful. And when you're in a small space, it really helps to have a ton of light. Yeah. But I don't know how small I would say this actually is. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's like, great to have a bit of extra space because we spend so much time together throughout the day that it's going to be nice to come back home and have our, a bit of privacy and do our own thing. I like that even though we're in the city, it has that cabin feel to it. There's so much wood and like this tree lamp and there's so many cool elements that have that outdoor feel to yeah. it. I prefer having a smaller space. The bigger space I have, I'm just gonna buy more things that clutter it, and I'd rather spend our money that we have on travel and going out to eat and things like that. Come check out the kitchen. It was newly renovated. Oh, wow. Caesar oh stone gosh. quartz counters, oh, stainless beautiful. steel appliances, and a natural stone backsplash. Oh my God. What is this? It's a microwave drawer. What? Oh, wow. I've never seen that before. Do you see this kind of like, window into the living room? I know, it's gonna be great. You cook the food, I take it to the table, and it's a little team effort. It's your restaurant skills. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's go see the master bedroom. All right, great. Oh, wow, nice. Wow. I love how the style is flowing well from the living room with a lot of wood and elements. It's a big bed. You have a lot of space in here. Yeah, it's nice. The only thing is that the apartment doors are right there, so whoever oh, walks yeah. in. There's no bedroom door, like we just kind of, everything is so open. Yeah. That's something that kind of is concerning to me since it's the very first thing that you see and I feel like if someone's coming over, it's just like right away, boom, the bedroom. Beautiful staircase here. Yeah, spiral staircase is a really good way to save space. Nice. 
cute, definitely a little smaller. It's a bit tight, but it's functional. Watch your head on these beams. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nikki and Tomislav are hunting for a tiny downtown home in Philly where they first met and fell in love. Oh, okay, it's cute, very cute. Yeah, it's a nice little nook. I don't really know if we need a second bedroom. I mean, it's just like, we're paying extra money for this, you know, like, yeah. it's over budget and it's kind of just like an extra space for me to clean. I always wanted to live in a place which had a loft, so I think even if we don't use it as a second bedroom, it's gonna be perfect to have a bit of a, a man cave or a hangout zone on a different level. I'm still concerned about the budget, of course. And I was hoping to see something a little smaller, and it didn't have the outdoor space that I was really hoping for. It is a bit above our budget, but I really like it that I would be willing to spend that extra money to get all the things that I want. The loft is like straight on what I would want to have. I mean, it's over our budget, and it's way bigger than either of us wanted to go. I know, but honestly, I can live with that. It was way too much with that loft space. You know, imagine how annoying it would actually be to have to go upstairs to use the bathroom. Well, I'm even thinking about like when your mom and dad come visit. Oh I God. can't really picture your dad going They're up that like, little teeny uh, staircase. Guys? Creation guys are too big for this spiral <laughs> staircase. <laughs> Next, Rachel brings them to a historic property dating back to the 1860s, located in the popular Center City District near Fittler Square. The unit we're going to see now is called the studio. Coming in under budget at 250000 Oh, perfect. The curb appeal is definitely there. I really like the neighborhood. And Nikki, this one is 500 square feet. Oh, amazing. Oh, wow. I know you must love that. <laughs> so this is a walk up on the third floor. We have to go one more flight of stairs after this. A lot of stairs. You're young, you can handle them. <laughs> the first space I'm gonna show you is the kitchen and dining room. Oh, wow. This is tiny. Okay. <laughs> this is cute though. I mean, this is kind of an old stove, but there's a lot of storage space in here. I mean, the cabinets would definitely have to be updated. I mean, the kitchen in general would definitely have to be updated. Well, since this place is under budget, there's room to make some improvements. There's room in the financial aspect, but I don't know if there's room in the physical sense. Can't you see us working yeah. in here together? Yeah, we can hug and cook and <laughs> you hold the vegetable and I cut it for you. <laughs> I love living tiny, but I would like to have some space in the kitchen. And we're gonna have to compromise a lot in the size area. Look at this little space, this is nice. Yeah, it's tiny again, <laughs> <laughs> which I guess should be expected in 500 square feet. I'm just thinking like if we have friends over, this is not a place where we could all hang out. I guess this is kind of cool. A bit of a space saver. I like it. I like feeling tiny in this tiny space. <laughs> it's almost like a bit silly, the triangle. I don't know if we would even be able to use that as an actual dining table. Oh, nice. cute. It has a tub and a shower. Nice. That's unexpected in tiny homes. It has a very small sink. This is kind of silly. But we both fit in here. You be in the bathtub, I brush my teeth, and then we switch spots. No, this could totally work. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy with this bathroom. I think so, too. Great, let's go see the rest of the place. Yes. OK. All right, next we are going into the bedroom and the living room. Oh, this is cute. Yeah, check out the ceilings. They're really high vaulted ceilings with the exposed beams. Do you see the fireplace? Oh, nice. That's totally my kind of style. So this is the living room and bedroom all in one space. Yeah, the, it's a true studio. You have oh, to share wow. the space. Just thinking in terms of practicality, like we have our friends coming over, like the seating arrangement is obviously very limited. And then like people will have to sit on our bed and you know, I don't know if I want people to be all over our bed while we're entertaining. I feel like we could add some more seating around here though, don't you think? Oh my gosh, this oh, is wow. amazing. Nikki and Tomislav adopted a less is more lifestyle while living abroad. Now they're hunting for their first tiny place stateside in Philly. Such a big outdoor space at the grill. I'm gonna be able to use my man skills over here. <laughs> 
This is totally like adding an extra room to the house. And the view of the street is really nice. Yeah, you really can feel the character of the neighborhood from here. Yeah, you I totally know. can. But you're super private because you're up a couple stories. What a great space. It's definitely the best attribute of this place. It's a good thing and also kind of a bad thing that it's almost the same size as the living area. So I guess if we choose this place, I'm going to be spending a lot of time there. <laughs> I, I'm definitely thinking um, in terms of realistically, what are we going to do? What are we going to use our property for? Let's and I'm all about it. like, let's just spend that money. Let's get whatever we want. We'll worry about everything else later. Yeah. Let's just get it. So I have to kind of reel him in because if it was up to him, he would just blow the whole budget out the window. <laughs> <laughs> You know, studio is not my cup of tea. It's very small. I was I was shocked when we walked in. It's only two hundred fifty thousand, so it really does leave us some room to be able to, you know, make some updates. Even with investing a bunch of money, that space is still going to be the same size as it is today. I'm looking for something tiny. I'm a tiny girl. Tiny girl in a tiny kitchen in with a, a tiny big house. man. Look at me. How will I fit in that <laughs> kitchen? Oh my gosh. <laughs> The next property Rachel lined up is in the Rittenhouse Square area, a fashionable residential neighborhood in Center City. The property we're gonna see now, I'm calling the Trinity. It's a classic Philadelphia row home style, uh, three stories and there's one room on each floor. Oh, okay. okay. Nikki, I think you're gonna love this place. It's coming in right on budget. Perfect, that's and great. And Tomislav, um, with the three levels, you actually get about 700 square feet. Oh, wow, that's perfect. So we get the right budget and we get the right size. It's the right size for you. <laughs> OK. This is so cute. This is really nice. I love how we have the stove right next to the window gonna help me be my sous chef. Yeah. Is that enough counter space for you two? A tiny bit tight. We could be like, let me cut the vegetables. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even has a cute little disco ball for the kitchen dance party. Oh yeah, <laughs> dinner dance party. It's totally Euro, I like it. It just looks really like nice and traditional, which is totally my style. This is perfect. Good I mean, size it's... for the space. I like how it's cozy and, you know, we're in the city, but, like, having our home have this much character and everything, like, it's yeah, so cute. Yeah. It does feel very homey. It's just not my style. It's nice, it's cozy. It's just a tiny bit boring to me, nothing too spectacular. So with time, I would definitely consider making some improvements with it. This oh, is nice. so cute. I like the style of this living room much better than of the kitchen. I love this. It's so homey and cozy, and it feels so classic Philly. Yeah. I love the windows, and the built-ins are great. It feels kind of like you're in a library. I love this little ottoman, too. It's so cute. Oh, wow. It's like a tiny ottoman. It's very cute. <laughs> I really like the second floor. I think it's a really nice size. We can have a lot of people there. And the day bed is also a cool addition. There's really so many features in this room that I really like. A lot of stairs for every day. <laughs> You're gonna have really strong calves if you move here. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> so this here's the master cool. bedroom. It's so bright. Nice. It fits a queen size bed and a couple end tables. Yeah, it's very nice and neutral, clean. It's funny how it's the higher we go, the better I like this place, so <laughs> I appreciate. There's some additional storage over here. There's two closets. Might even be too much storage for us. We really tend to live more like minimalists and we don't have a lot of stuff, so having all that extra storage space just kind of seems like too much. There you go. Oh, nice. This is a good space. Oh, wow, this is big. Yeah, I've got a tub. Can both fit in here nicely, but it is on the third floor. Little courtyard patio. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow, nice. This is so cute. <laughs> Nikki and Tomislav moved back to the States after four years of living in Europe. They're buying their first home in Philly and looking to go tiny. It's nice to have a bit of outdoor space. I'm really happy with this. Oh my god, we could have our friends over and relax out here. We could have a garden. It's such a nice treat. I know the only thing is it is it feels a tiny bit closed in with, you know, 
it's kind of like, you know, it's not that open. But I, I do appreciate it for what it is. Bringing a grill here and planting some herbs in the garden, it's gonna be a really nice treat. Yeah, definitely. It's so nice to imagine coming home to a house like this where the street looks really cute and I can imagine feeling excited to walk up our cute little street and go into our new home. Moving from Europe, we really wanted to go back to Philly precisely because of that distinctive look that Philly has. So it was really nice to find a place that has all of those things. It's a bit more secluded, less busy, so it was nice. Rachel found three unique Philly properties for Nikki and Tomislav, all in the trendy city center. All that's left, one tiny choice. Is there any place that you know right away that you don't want? I'm just thinking the Trinity. I totally agree. I can't imagine having to go up two flights of stairs to go to the bathroom. Space 3 is right on budget at 300 k and the three-floor layout offers plenty of square footage and historic Philly charm, but the outdoor space feels a bit closed in. OK, so the Trinity is gone. What do you think? I think I would go for the studio. At 500 square feet, Space 2 is the perfect size for Nikki, and the budget offers unexpected savings. But the kitchen is small, and the one-room living concept might not be functional for entertaining. I don't know. I would honestly go for the loft. Space 1 has a square footage that Tomislav wants, but it comes with a steep price tag. The unit is sleek with a renovated kitchen and great light, but there's no outdoor space. I'm sorry. I just feel like it's too much space for us. You're going to get sick of me eventually. You're going to want me to be in a separate room. But your loft doesn't have any outdoor space. I know, but the size of the studio is so small, I feel that it's we're going teeny tiny. I guess you're right. We're choosing the studio. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> awesome. Amazing. Yeah, oh. 500 square feet, here we come. You're gonna love it. <laughs> such a great night. Nikki and Tomislav moved into the studio a few months later and jumped right into exploring Philly. The best thing about going tiny is the practicality of it. We can go live our lives oh, and funny. really enjoy the city. I could never even imagine that I would come to Philly and now we actually own a property here. Like that's, that just blows my mind. It feels amazing, especially because we met here. I'm really happy we're back. Me too. It's like, we're really here. We're really part of Philadelphia. Should we go get a coffee? Yeah, let's grab a cup of coffee. Although I was really afraid that 500 square feet is going to be too little, we found ways to make it work. Do you want to get some carrots? Oh, yeah, great idea. The tiny studio helps keep their focus on doing stuff rather than having stuff. And with 50K saved, a kitchen reno is in the plans. Just finish this up, and then we can bring this out to the deck. OK, sounds good. But for now, it has all the function they need. Here comes the food. Our outdoor space is a huge hit with us and with our friends. We're hanging out there all the time. It turned out to be the main focal point of this whole apartment, so I'm really happy we have it. Anybody want anything else to drink? We've had so many adventures together, and it really feels like it's the first step towards our new life together, our first kind of grown-up life in America. Tiny is the new big, and the downsizing movement is here to stay. This is so cute. Don't underestimate these tiny abodes. Wow. Woo! Awesome. There's a washer dryer right here. The sky is the limit when going tiny. Okay. Oh, oh my god. It's crazy. Michael lost check. Oh, ow. Backcountry retreats, check. Beach getaways, check. Whatever your dream is, Tiny can take you there. It's all about the art of the hunt. In this episode, a family of five looks to downsize in the Shenandoah Valley. Woo! But with three young boys, will mom and dad opt for a modern aesthetic? Love the glass tile, the open shelving. A traditional riverside cabin? This is five stars right here. Or a cozy, make that very cozy cottage. We wanted to go tiny, we're going tiny here. Let the hunt begin. Let's get ready for the day. We have three boys that are full of energy and life. Yeah! <laughs> it's 
so much more work than I ever expected. <laughs> I recommend it to anybody that wants to fix and repair things daily. Shenandoah Valley natives Sarah and Brian are not only raising Graydon, Chapman, and Hudson in the area, but they're also working as a team flipping properties around nearby Harrisonburg. We're going to have to just totally demo this whole front porch. Flipping houses can be very risky. I want to do a tile backsplash to really make it pop. But it's also extremely exciting. We're going to have to knock it out fast, guys. We're excited to get started, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we are busy from sunup until sundown every day of the week. Who wants strawberries? Sarah and Brian want to focus on their kids and their thriving business. But something big is getting in the way. So we live in a colonial brick home. It's about 4,000 square feet. Just having such a huge house brings on a lot of big responsibilities. After one especially long day doing home maintenance projects, they decided enough was enough. I think it was just a realization at that point that you know we're wasting all those moments with the boys and capturing all that awesome, exciting stuff of life just trying to maintain this beast. The perfect solution for this family of five is a tiny one. We're ready to try a new chapter in our life, live a little bit simpler, and focus on what's really important, our family. So we're ready to go tiny. The couple can spend up to $225,000 and think that a 650 square foot home with a family friendly layout would work for them as long as it has a kitchen big enough to cook for three growing boys. Sarah wants to live near downtown Harrisonburg, while Brian is OK with a place further away where the kids have plenty of room to play outside. <laughs> Helping them with the hunt is a friend who knows the Shenandoah Valley area well. Hey, Chuck. Local real estate expert, Jerry Barker. This is the most wonderful area to live in. We've got mountains. We've got beautiful vistas. We have rivers. We have farms. We have wonderful colleges and great job opportunities. Jerry's goal is to get Sarah and Brian excited about their move, so she's starting the hunt with a nicely priced, sleek, low-maintenance small home close to downtown Harrisonburg. Hi, Jerry. Hey, Sarah. Hi, Brian. Hey, how are you? Good. Welcome to the modern oasis. The thousand square feet. Oh, wow. OK. And what's the price on this? 225000 Wow. Right on budget. Sounds great. Wow. This really is so modern. Look at this kitchen. Yes. Love the glass tile, the open shelving. This is really a nice look. I will say the storage space in the refrigerator, two burners Ooh. to cook for all of our kids. The kitchen has a really beautiful look to it. It's very modern, but would need some modifications. We live in our kitchen from dinner to watching the boy shows and talking about their days at school. That all takes place in, in our kitchen, and that's going to be the same thing in the tiny house. It is really cute area. Yeah, I mean, I could sit here and do emails and, and work, but it definitely will not work as a like a dining room table. Yeah, we would absolutely not be able to fit all of our kids <laughs> on the okay. space. So we'd have to do something else. Yeah. In my mind, we would just use that space, and we could just build a table right back against that wall that was retractable. What do you think of that canopy bed? Oh, the bed's Cute. super cool. It's just it's comfortable. Oh, it's high. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned about how close it's located to the rest of the kitchen and living space. It's really just kind of all one space. You know, it's kind of strange being able to reach out, and there's your master bedroom. <laughs> it's so weird to think that we're sitting here watching TV or a movie, and, you know, we could have one boy here, one boy here, and one boy there. They'd be cozy. <laughs> I can definitely see opening up the French doors and just being able to extend the living space right outside onto that deck. Floor-to-ceiling exterior French doors are a great way to bring the outdoors in and give a small home a light, airy, and less closed-in feeling. While they can be made of wood or metal, choosing clear glass will serve to brighten up the space even when the doors are closed. How about coming down here and taking a look at the bathroom? Okay. Wow, love the door. This is fantastic. I can see the boys really enjoying <laughs> closing this door. Wow. Love how clean and modern it is in here. Yeah, I love the attention to detail that they have. Yeah. And this shower is unbelievable. And honestly, the boys, all three, could get in here, and it would be plenty of space for them. It's a full-size bathroom in a tiny space. And I mean, who could ask for more?
that's great for short term. Where are we gonna put our kids, Jerry? Remember that staircase that we saw when we were walking in? There is a whole nother space upstairs. Sarah and Brian are impressed by the contemporary touches in the modern oasis close to downtown Harrisonburg, but having external stairs that connect the two floors might make it a tough layout for a family with three young children. Look at this unbelievable space. The windows, it's beautiful. I really like the space a lot, but I mean, we're gonna have to figure out how to like bring these two spaces together. I think day one, we would probably have to go ahead and punch straight down through the floor because right now it really feels almost like a duplex, right? We could put a spiral staircase in, which isn't all that big of a deal, really. I love this house. I love the kitchen and bathroom. So I really feel like the spiral staircase could be worth it. You know, the extra expense could really make sense for our family. Wow, look at this view. Yeah, it is nice. It is a stunning deck, but oh my goodness. The only thing I can think is my kids and how they would try to get in between <laughs> these wires. I don't think they can fit, but I know they would try. So we would definitely have to put some type of a plexiglass barrier or screen in there to make sure that that does not happen. Do you have anything that you can show us, like a property that's maybe more conducive layout-wise to our family of five with three boys? Now I've got something I think you're really going to like. It's a little more rural and rustic. Uh, that sounds great. I'm, I'm definitely up for that. So let's go. Sounds yes. great. It's almost surreal to think that we're going from 4,000 square feet to 1,000. It's really kind of crazy. The thing that you're going to have an issue with, for sure, is cabinet space. I think maybe storage space in general. I think that's going to be the hardest thing. By going tiny, we're going to do what we've been saying we want to do for the longest time anyway, just get rid of so much stuff that we don't need. It's going to just take a lot of selling. <laughs> yeah. Next up, Jerry brings the hunt to Luray, Virginia, close to the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains, to show Sarah and Brian a home with a family-friendly layout that's so close to the Shenandoah River, it's built on stilts. Wow, what do we have here? This thing's pretty cool looking. We have the Riverside Cabin. It's absolutely beautiful out here, but oh my goodness, it's not even close to town town. See, I don't mind it that bad. I mean, it's so peaceful and quiet. I love it. I love the space. This is a thousand square feet. And what was the price tag on this one again? It's 250,000. Ooh, wow. But it's turnkey, Brian. It doesn't need anything. Yeah. So let's go take a look. All right. All right, let's go. What a gorgeous view. Is that the Shenandoah River right there? Yes, it is. Nice. Wow, this is amazing. Isn't this beautiful outdoor? Gosh, I, I can't, you know, very rarely do you ever see a house that's all solid wood. I don't see any drywall in this whole house. Full kitchen. Yes. I like this, Jerry. You wanted a full kitchen with a dishwasher. I love that, a full stove. I like the painted cabinets, too. It really goes along with the whole theme of the house. And I love this space for our dining. This would be fantastic for our family. And what a wonderful view right from your dining room table. Bring the fish right in <laughs> to the table. <laughs> I absolutely love the kitchen. There would not be any renovation that would need to be done at all. But it definitely comes at a price, $25,000 over our budget. This is such a nice stackstone fireplace. It gives this house such warmth. And I can really imagine our family sitting here with the fireplace on, watching a movie in the evenings. When there's a chill in the air, nothing beats the relaxing glow of a toasty, warm indoor fireplace. Not only do they have a great look, but in tiny homes, they can lower bills because they commonly have the added benefit of being able to heat the entire space. They've done such a great job with the theme of this place. All the wood, the slate. I know you like the rustic look, but I, I prefer more of a modern, cleaner look. I really feel like I'm camping, and you know how I feel about the location. It's <laughs> so far out. And I know how you feel about camping. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I just love being out in, in, the, in nature and the vibe that the, that the cabin puts off. All right, let's go look at the master bedroom. Wow. Wow, look at this. Look at all this space. It's got a king-size bed. There's no way you could feel like you're camping here. <laughs> it's still pretty rustic. It's in your mind. <laughs> the rustic's in your mind. This is five stars right here.
We would have our own spacious master. So from the standpoint of privacy, it really is exactly what we're looking for. Wow, well this could be great space for our boys. They would love this, having the beds here. This is scary to me because we would either have to have something here, almost like bars, <laughs> but you couldn't have anything against this wall because I'm sure they would, I mean, any way you look at it, it's gonna be an expensive project. It's not something we can put off, right? If we're gonna have a project, Sarah and Brian are checking out a riverside cabin located on a scenic waterfront spot in Luray, Virginia. While it's far from downtown Harrisonburg, Brian is sure their active boys would love the wide open spaces it has, both inside and out. Wow, quite a spacious bathroom. Oh, this is nice, yes. Full vanity, and look at that shower. It's so big. All three of our boys could easily fit in there. Yeah, way bigger than what I thought. This whole bathroom is bigger than what I thought we were going to get in any of these houses. While I really like the Riverside Cabin, I still feel like it's a large home and it would be a lot for us to maintain. This view is absolutely amazing. It's breathtaking. So what did you think about the Riverside Cabin? The rustic vibe is, is great. And I think the boys will absolutely love it as well. And for me, I love the full kitchen and the outdoor space. But do you have anything that's closer to downtown? I've got something in mind I'd like to show you. Great. What did you think of the Riverside Cabin? I love the yard and absolutely could not get enough of the river. Just hang out with the boys, fishing. And the inside of the cabin was awesome. I loved I, all the wood. Yeah, I love the full kitchen. That was that was great. But a big thing for me would be that location. I just feel like we would spend all of our time in the car and not actually, you know, being able to spend time together. It's really pretty crazy to think about. <laughs> If Sarah and Brian are ready to take the leap to a truly tiny home, Jerry has a rustic farmhouse for them close to historic downtown Harrisonburg with an equally tiny price tag. Hi, guys. Hey, how are you? Great, how are you? Good, I love this location. This is what I've been looking for, close to downtown. Wow, this thing is so small. <laughs> What's the square footage of this house? It's 480 square feet. But the really great thing is it's only 125,000. Wow, so $100,000 less than our budget. That would be fantastic. Let's go see it. That sounds great. I really like the fact that we're so far under budget on this house, but we do need to figure out why it's inexpensive. Come on in. Ooh. Look at these exposed beams, fantastic. But these are original, got a lot of character, I like it too. Whoa, is that the kitchen? That is the kitchen. Wow, look at this stove, honey. Quite a difference from what we have. <laughs> and this sink. You can't even fit a dish in that sink. There's no way Sarah's ever gonna be able to operate in a kitchen that small. The only thing that I could think to do is to go ahead and just take that back wall and extend it out and be able to go ahead and make a, a functional kitchen that, that we can live in. I guess it's what we do every day. We're renovators, but I love the idea of making some improvements and renovations to really call it home. I mean, this is functional. The boys would love this. The boys would love this. And if this I can keep it from climbing on it. We're still going to be able to have to have a space over here. I think that we can eat regular dinner, but I mean, we wanted to go tiny. We're going tiny here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is really tiny. <laughs> OK, guys, what do you think of this living space? I can say it doesn't take very long to get there. <laughs> this is going to have to be such a multifunctional space. Is this something that we can use as a sleeping space? I think a Murphy bed would work really well on that wall. That door on the right side is really just not even necessary at all. We should probably just completely close that in and that would give us a whole entire wall that we could use to install some type of a drop-down Murphy bed. How about taking a look at the bathroom? Let's see. Right. Oh. Well, we do have a shower, so we have to see if that will work for our boys. Will they all three fit in there? Let's see. <laughs> it's tight. <laughs> <laughs> the bathroom's definitely going to be a little challenging with the boys, but that's all part of being in a tiny house. What do you think about this spiral staircase with the boys? I think with our boys and how tough they are, I don't think that'll be a problem at all. Whoa. Oh, wow. Wow, it's pretty surprisingly spacious, isn't it? There's a lot of room up here. 
Home Flippers Sarah and Brian are close to downtown Harrisonburg trying to figure out if they can get the 480 square foot tiny farmhouse to work for their family of five. This could be perfect for the boys. They can sit right here, watch the television, playing with their toys. This could be really great space for them. I just love that there are two separate spaces, one upstairs for the boys and then us down here on the main level. So I think having the two levels is really uh, quite a fantastic option for us. It's really beautiful out here, yeah. so. Well, the boys always want to be outside anyway, so this is great. This is really just an added bonus. We can entertain and really enjoy this outside space. And I also love being able to be close to downtown and to restaurants and shops. But I, I just, I can't quit thinking about the fact that this entire tiny farmhouse will fit inside of our kitchen right now. It's just, that that's hard for me to get my head around. So you guys have a big decision to make, so just let me know. Thank you so much, Jerry. Jerry came through with three tiny options that each have some serious pros and cons. The question now for Sarah and Brian is which one will work for their active family? So for me, the modern oasis was absolutely beautiful inside, really modern, which is exactly what I love. House one is right on budget at $225,000 and has 1,000 square feet of polished touches. The problem is, Pricey internal stairs would have to be created to unite the kids' bedroom with the lower level. That separate bedroom space where you have to enter for the boys, it would be such a safety concern. Do you agree? I'm totally fine with just giving the modern oasis the ax. Let's go ahead and cross that one off the list. Well, I think the Riverside Cabin is a fantastic option for our family. With 1,000 square feet, House 2 has a woodsy charm and is family friendly. But at $250,000, it's 25K over budget and farther than Sarah wants to be from downtown Harrisonburg. I really feel like the tiny farmhouse is the best option for us. Over 3,500 square feet smaller than their current home, House 3 is truly tiny at 480 square feet. But at 100K under budget, the appeal is there. 480 square feet. <laughs> I mean, I love the tiny farmhouse, but it is a tiny farmhouse. I keep going back to why would we spend $25,000 over our budget why not pay $100,000 under budget and make the improvements and renovations that we want to the property? I think the Riverside Cabin is, is a really great option. I mean, it's tough, it's rustic, it's got the huge yard for the boys to run around, it's got the river. My whole purpose with, with buying a tiny house is not to spend all of my time driving back and forth from our house to our clients and work. I mean, I love the location and I, I did really love that property. So are you thinking that the tiny farmhouse is the option for us? I want you to be happy. I want to get it done quickly. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm in for the tiny farmhouse. Let's cheers to that. Cheers. Sarah and Brian have decided to downsize big time with house three. While it might take some work to make it work for them, these seasoned flippers are up for the challenge. Ready to start dinner? We love our tiny home. It's been such a positive change for us. You feel like a burger or a hot dog, man? We're making it work for right now. Brian's doing a lot of grilling. <laughs> Guys, it's, it's almost ready. Let's go. It's actually kind of annoying having to set up our dinner table every <laughs> single night. All right, you guys hungry? Yeah. We certainly want to make some renovations, and I think once we have the renovations done, it's really going to be a perfect space for our family. What you see here is our bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and our living room and our kitchen. So we really need your help on making this space functional for our family. Being $100,000 under budget has allowed us to do whatever we want with this property. We're gonna blow out this wall here and come down, see if we can fit about a 10 by 12 room in here. Sure. You know, another 120 square feet, we're gonna be at 600. That's where we wanted to be anyway. That'll give us the kitchen space that we're looking for and then be have a place for a dining room table too. We're living on an air mattress right now, which is less than ideal. I think you got just around the right ceiling height for a Murphy bed. Of course, we'd have to eliminate the door and, and do some siding work on the outside. I am really, really excited about starting the renovations. Do not jump on the bed. So the boys are adjusting. They really enjoy sleeping all in one room. It's like a big slumber party for them. It's definitely rowdy. <laughs> Going tiny has really allowed us more time to spend with our boys at night. And we love that. It's been really a great change for us. Whether the goal is owning that first home or even a vacation getaway in a far-flung location, 
Hopeful homeowners everywhere are questioning how much living space they really need. And when building isn't an option, turning to the real estate market can make tiny homeowning dreams come true in a big way. This is such a funny door. <laughs> you need some toilet paper? <laughs> no, I don't. If you've ever wanted to live this simple life in a tiny space, you'll be amazed. Wilderness locations, urban habitats. When buying a property under 500 square feet, ingenuity rules and freedom follows. Oh, this is so neat. It's climbing up the bookshelf. That's tiny living. When was the last time we went to the nature center? Snowden, if you could be any kind of animal, what kind of animal would you want to be? A fish? Elizabeth and James think Boise is a great place to raise their two kids, Snowden and new arrival Olson. Let's go in. Let's do it. Boise is a great place that has a lot of culture, and then it also has great access to outdoor recreational opportunities. So the combination of those two things is just really great for us. It's a gopher snake. Do you know what a gopher is? No. Hey, Steve, it's James. How are you? James works as a real estate broker and Elizabeth as a published writer and online teacher. So to have enough room for home offices and family life too. You are making it difficult for me to make phone calls. They bought big, really big. We live in this house, almost 4,000 square feet, which is very big and we love this house. What it lacks is outdoor space. And because the house is so big, it's really quite easy for us to stay indoors, which is not why we live in Boise. But over time, Elizabeth realized that a quieter place away from the family buzz Do you need a hug, sweets? would help her writing career. This is a very small matter for such a gigantic timber tantrum. Elizabeth also teaches in Boston part-time, so the idea of buying a second tiny house turned into a real need. It makes sense to have a tiny house, one that I can use as an office, and that James could use when I'm out of town and this house rents out. I want it to be something that I can use without being burdened by all of the maintenance of this big house. They have a budget of $65,000, but can't agree on size. James wants a family-friendly 500 square feet, but Elizabeth wants to go teeny tiny at 200. You know, the challenge we're gonna have still is this size thing. That's gonna be a hard one to reconcile. I want it to be someplace that feels monastic enough for me to ride in. In writer speak, Elizabeth wants a monastic space, something simple and low key. But when needed, James also wants to make sure that their new space functions as an outdoorsy retreat the whole family can enjoy. We end up with something much smaller than 500 square feet. It's going to be hard to get all of the use out of it that we're looking to get. Derek Hurd is a local architect and designer who will help them find the perfect tiny house. James and Elizabeth, they are coming from different places. So we have to reconcile that with the best of both worlds and find something that they both can work with. Hey, guys. Hey. Right. Welcome to the loft. The sun comes out, and it's a new day. Wow. Oh, this is neat. This is industrial. So price-wise, it's 80000 OK, so a little above our budget. Yeah, but it's 625 square feet. What? <laughs> it's not teeny tiny. Sorry, Elizabeth. Come on in. Let's look at it. So as you can see, big open space. So this was originally a two-car garage, and they've converted it into this living space. This is the garage wall with the corrugated steel on the outside. Feels a little cold from the outside, but this beam up here really does soften it up and make it feel a little warmer. I love the style, yeah. uh, but it, feels, it still feels very big. I mean, are you looking for a prison cell size, or what are you thinking? I mean, I think a prison cell sounds kind of like a great place to write in. OK. Just kidding. I really like the windows and the light and the openness of this place, but it feels kind of stark in a way that I just can't get comfortable with. You can feel the history in it. You can feel that it was a garage, and I like that. So as you can see, full kitchen set up here, four burner range, dishwasher, full fridge over there. Neat. Yeah, this is fun. I mean, yeah, three different fun. counter surfaces. I know. Mixing it up. I like this. <laughs> this is recycled glass here. You can see all the little pieces of oh, mirror wow. and glass. Oh, my gosh. This is cool. beautiful. When you're out of town in the summer, I could have a couple friends over. It's big enough we could prepare a meal and kind of share yeah. the space. And then this window is great. Look at the, all this light. This is really neat. The only con is the books in the kitchen would be you know, in bed together. 
Um, I would rather a little less kitchen, I think. With the kitchen, I'm of two minds. The mother-wife loves the kitchen. The writer mind feels that a kitchen of that size is unnecessary. It seems like the nicer the kitchen, the more distracted she's gonna be by it, which is a challenge because I wanna have a kitchen so that I can do some food prep. Before we go upstairs, take a look at the bathroom right behind you. This one here, okay, yep. great. This is a great, big, spacious bathroom. This window, oh my gosh, it's, I it's huge. <laughs> Exposed things. Look at the wood and the glass and these big, what are these, big cinder blocks? Look at the shower. Huge, beautiful this is shower. Wonderful. Yeah. There's no tub, right, for the kids, but I guess we could Get just a little... bring in, yeah, one of those plastic baby tubs or Yeah, whatever. that would be great. Yeah. This is so neat. I can use this as an office. <laughs> now we're talking, okay. Let's go look up at the loft. Okay, Sounds great. Good. Reclaimed fur stair treads here. Oh, wow. These. Derek hopes Elizabeth can see this garage turned studio as a good space to get some writing done, and for James to like it as a tiny home for when the couple rents out their big main house during the summer. Oh, wow. Okay, the loft. Yeah. Huh. Again, big open space. Yeah. I'm not thrilled about the steel again. It's like a little harsh for me. I like it because it's this fun contrast of earth made and person made. Oh, look, and here we've got this perfect little desk nook. Oh, yeah. This is a nice writing space. It feels like it is kind of hemmed in in a nice way. It's got a view of this quiet, tree-lined street. Bed, two end tables, you know, the windows on the ends. It's, it works. What about bumping your head on this? Yeah, I mean, the bed's a little cramped. I've got about, you know, maybe two steps. <laughs> <laughs> As you get older, though, you can get further into the corners. <laughs> I like the open sleeping, but what will we do with the kids? Well, I mean, I think we got room for, you know, a crib and a little bed up here. What if someone sleepwalks? Yeah, you know, the bigger question is, okay, when the kids get older, yeah. then what? how does this work? Yeah, they're not gonna wanna sleep in the same room with us when they're six and nine or... I think that the loft could work. I liked that it had that little perfectly placed nook for a desk with a window looking over the neighborhood. It was really encouraging that, hey, maybe this is gonna work for her. So here's the outdoor space that we came through on the way in. And is this the whole outdoor space? This is it, low maintenance. I mean, we might as well be inside. <laughs> this is a little bit how it feels, right? Yeah, yeah. So at least it's, it's a nice place to have dinner out here. Yeah, we would definitely eat out here. But overall, what do you guys think of the loft? I think it's big, it's open, I like the full kitchen. Style-wise, it's like a little cold, industrial, not really what I'm after. I love the style. I love the natural wood and the, the metal and the industrial feel of it. And I feel like that little desk area would work, but I still think it's bigger than I want. I have a property that I think is going to fit the bill. Oh, good. What did you think of the style? It does have these neat touches, like the bathroom rocks. Yeah, that bathroom was so much fun. And the windows throughout the loft just put so much light in there. I um, agree. I loved the light. The light and the materials were so neat. But it doesn't have an outdoor space that fits our criteria. You know, it has that neat little patio, but there's nothing green. For house two, Derek lines up a smaller space with the creative studio vibe and some more yardage. So come on up. This one's called the cottage. Comes in at 200 square feet. It's 10 by 20. Oh my gosh. That's so tiny, Derek. I love the grass here, though. This is beautiful. Yeah. Price wise, it's 70,000. So a little, little over budget. Oh, it is wonderful. Look around now. See everything, everything. Look at how many books could be written at this wonderful desk. It has this wonderful blue floor. It's tiny. You can see yourself working there. I can. I just love it. Do you love it? If you're writing there, I don't see how we're going to be playing on this floor and you know doing our thing in here while you're trying to get some work done. It does feel like a house for one person, not for a whole family. OK. All right. How does that make you feel, James? Yeah, right? I feel like uh, I'm going to sit back and have Derek psychoanalyze me while we talk about how it, we've just gotten booted from the whole deal here. We have this whole life at our at our house that's full that we made that we love. And then this is a place for a separate section of that life that doesn't really have room in the other place. When you first walk in, the first thing you see is desk. And that is wonderful. It's like the walls are all right there. There's just not a lot of space for me or for the kids. So there is more to this writing shiv than just writing. Let's look at the kitchen. OK. Lots of counter space. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I could, you know, definitely plenty of space for making food on the counters. I don't see a stove. Yep, no. Hot plate and then convection oven above on the left. And these are pull-out drawer, fridge and freezer. 
Got it. All right, so not huge, but right. big enough, I guess. Yeah, enough for a week. And then again, a lot of daylight, big window looking out into the yard. This is perfect. It feels like a tea house. I and mean, obviously, I'm not making any big meals in here for company or anything, but you know, I guess in the summertime, I'm mostly going to try to be out of the house or eating outdoors anyway. It's my favorite distraction to do things like make scones and Play-Doh and just anything kitchen-wise. Whereas this kitchen, it's perfect for making a sandwich or having tea, but it's not, other than that, a kitchen that would draw me away from my work. It's not the writer's enemy. Yeah, this is a really nice bathroom. This is great. Let's go in the shower. <laughs> you go in the shower. Look at this great shower. You can sit in the shower. This is neat. And the blue floor is just so cool. It's got some fun elements in here. I mean, like this, you know, this tile along here is, is kind of cool. And I'm surprised how big this bathroom is, actually, considering how small the building is. This is a great, big, lovely bathroom. The bathroom in the cottage is great. The shower is quite large. It's light. I like it. Well, let's uh, go up and see the loft, see what's up there. Oh, this is so neat. It's climbing up the bookshelf. I love it. Well, let's uh, go up and see the loft. Climbing up the bookshelf. I love it. And it's good for our balance, probably. Elizabeth envisions finishing her next novel in this 200-square-foot cabin, but James can't see retreating here with the kids during the summer. And then this hatch. I'll just close this so no one uh, one steps it down. Cool. That's that a great cool. idea. Looks like it should be on a pirate ship. I like this wood, all the wood in here. I think that's kind of fun. This window's nice. I mean, it's, it'd be cool to wake up to that light, but where's the bed, right? So you have your open space, your open floor space if you need it, but then this is actually a Murphy bed that's going to oh. drop down. All right, cool. What okay. a great use of space. So there you go, full queen size bed up here. Wow. Nice. Oh, and there's a little window behind there. Yep. It's yeah. beautiful. They're in the treetops up here. How are we going to get the kids up here? We're going to need a pulley and a harness to get Olsen up, right? I can put him on the carrier and climb up. Uh -huh. Snowden will love the ladder. It would probably be Olsen in the crib in the corner, Snowden downstairs on the fainting couch. We'd be crowded in the night, but we would then have the day to be outdoors. Well, you're just in the trees. It's wonderful. And I love how it just feels like such a secret. Maybe we can fit a small crib, um, but I, it's going to be difficult to get everybody sleeping up in there. So open deck here, a little room for this dining. Nice. Got your landscape stacked stones here, kind of giving it this. a base. And then here's the grass that you've been looking yes, for. Yes, I love this grass. And it's got this little pergola area. We could put an inexpensive table there and have dinner there every night. And the fire pit, I mean, making s'mores. This is a oh, fun yard right this here. This is a fun yard, yeah, I agree. You can imagine being out here with the kids, playing croquet, kicking a ball, whatever. I think it's awesome. Overall, I think the cottage is perfect. It's a perfect writer's space. I think the yard is beautiful, but I just don't see how we're going to make it work there. Derek is giving it his all with trying to settle the different uses Elizabeth and James are trying to squeeze out of a new tiny house. And something he hopes can work for everybody pops up on his radar. House 3 is a proper house that's more budget friendly than the cottage. Hey, Derek. Hey, guys. Good all to right. see you. Hi, you how are you? Come on in. This one's called the fishbowl. This one's right on budget at 65,000. Oh, that's Perfect. good. Yeah. Like and size-wise, good for you, James, 550 square feet. Awesome. So it's not a shed. It's not teeny tiny. Come on, uh, you'll like it, I'm sure. Can you feel it getting better all the time? Can you feel it getting better? So as you can see, it opens right up into the living room. Nice. Good natural light coming from a couple directions. This is where it gets its name, the fishbowl the window. Fish bowl. Yeah, it's a beautiful window. Yeah. Does it come furnished? And it does. It does. It does. Everything oh you see gosh, is here. Oh my gosh, look, boots. Yeah. Wow. And suitcases. <laughs> look at this. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we'd move some of that stuff out, right? We can't have a huge pile of suitcases in the corner. The kids no. are going to be buried in that in six minutes. Looks like a <gasps> tower to climb. It does look like it looks like a challenge. I think it's comfortable. It's cozy. It's warm. I think it's not very monastic. Sure. There's space to fill with stuff and make decisions about, whereas I just want tiny. But with a family, I mean, monastic's tough to pull off. I think the living room's great. I like that big fishbowl window. I like that couch for napping in the summer. That's going to be great. The living room has a lot going on. It doesn't really have a place where I would imagine myself writing. Well, come on in. Let's check out the kitchen. It's a good size space, full size fridge, dishwasher even four burner range. Concrete on the counters is cool. Big enough, right, that I could be in here and, and make a meal for the whole family. Um, 
but it's tiny, right? I mean, it's way smaller than our kitchen at home. I always spend the whole time playing in the kitchen. It's a full house. It's probably half or a third the size of our current kitchen. It's big enough still to get the kids in there and have them help me cooking a little bit, and you know we can prepare a meal together. But not so big that you're you know going to be spending time cleaning it and that kind of thing. So here's the kids' bedroom. The wood floors carrying through is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. It's the old original oak. It's a nice size. We definitely put Snowden on the bed here. Get Olson's crib over here in the corner. Yeah. Other bedrooms right down here. Oh, nice light. And that skylight is just going to be amazing. The light coming down in the morning and looking up at stars at night, that'd be awesome. Yeah. More of these built-ins, too. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of storage in this tiny house. Definitely. The master bedroom is my favorite place in this house. I love the skylight and that treehouse feel. I love that it is surrounded by nature in that way. Well, let's check out the bathroom. It's right Great. between the two oh. bedrooms. All right, thanks. Oh, I like this barn door. Oh, that's neat. Nice window. I like the light coming through there. It's good that there's a bathtub. Absolutely. Give the kids baths right here. This is this works. This is such a funny door. <laughs> yeah. Do you need some toilet paper? <laughs> no, I don't. Thank you. So come on out and check out the deck. A little outdoor living space. I mean, really, this is what I want, right? Is more of an outdoor living space. Right. Elizabeth wants what she calls a monastic writer's retreat, or an austere space where a monk might live. But for James, this 550 square foot home can serve double duty as a fun summer place when Elizabeth teaches in Boston. And then a whole nother area down here, too. Cool. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, this teepee's great. <laughs> <laughs> and a hippie hot tub. You know, you stoke the fire in the afternoon, and then by evening time, you got the hot water in there already for soak. <laughs> or boiling the children. <laughs> <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> The one thing that's missing, though, is green space, like right, a real green right. space where we could do cartwheels and play ball and yep. do all of that kind of stuff. I love the yard. I love that deck. I love being out there. We would use the outdoor space a lot. We would have um, dinners on that patio in the warm months. We would hang out in that teepee, and who knows what we would do with the cauldron, but we'd probably do something with it. So here it is, the retro <laughs> camper all sitting by itself. Da -da -da -da. Wow, this is fun. Wow. Wow. What do you think? I mean, is this a, your monastic writing space or what? I feel conflicted. I feel like it's this cute place that would be a great playhouse for the kids and for us. Um, but there's really no place that feels perfect right now for me to write. It's definitely not monastic. Well, I mean, a really fun monk could be in here, right? A I mean, totally fun monk, but I think I'm not that much fun as a monk. Oh, OK. They are coming from different places with their needs as far as Elizabeth's writing space and James looking for more of a place to have the family over. At the end of the day, I'm not sure if it's going to be a compromise or if it's going to be a sacrifice, because we've seen some pretty different homes. It's a long day. It has been a long day. If we're going to make any progress, we got to just throw one of the houses out straight away. Loft. The loft. Yeah. You too? Just doesn't really work for me. House one is a 625 square foot garage turned studio with a loft, and it's 15K over budget at $80,000. Elizabeth likes the industrial style, but James wants more yard space. Yeah. Way over budget. Yeah, and it doesn't really serve any of the purposes. We'd have to compromise all of them. We're down to two. If you're to pick one, which one is it? The cottage. I love it. I think that it would add so much. House two is $70,000, 5K over budget. But as a 200 square foot space with a built-in desk, Elizabeth was smitten. What are your thoughts? For me, it's clearly the fishbowl. Right on budget, house three is 550 square feet. It's a fun space for James and the kids. But for Elizabeth, it's more of a house and less of a writer shack. We could use that for every purpose, I think. But the yard at the cottage is a yard. It's so green. I can picture having us all running around on that lawn and having dinner there. But the yard at the fishbowl, I mean, it's got the teepee. You even said yourself that you'd enjoy going in and out of there. The trailer, how much fun would Snowden have playing in and out of that thing? I see all that, and those are all fun things. The cottage is just so clean and tranquil. That's where I feel I could write best. But I also get that the fishbowl might be better for the other three of you. So if the fishbowl is the one that you feel in your heart we need, I'm, I can go there. The main purpose of the building is really for you as an office. Yeah, I'm going to be there in the summer, but every day all year, you're going to be there writing. If this is the one you need, then that's the one we get. That sounds wonderful. I'll call Derek. Okay.
<laughs> they buy the cottage, and a month later, Elizabeth is already getting a lot of writing done. Life in the cottage is terrific. Cozy. <laughs> In just a few weeks now, Elizabeth's going to head off to Boston to teach for the summer. She'll bring Olson with her, and Snowden and I will stay here, and we'll, we'll move from the main house over to the cottage. <laughs> Snowden, what do you think about the cottage? Do you like being in here? Uh-huh. Tell me about it. It's beautiful. Snowden has really been helping me out in the kitchen over here. Can you help me cut up this banana right here? I think because it's smaller, it's a little less intimidating for her. Go ahead. All the way to the top. I'm going to follow you up. And soon you're going to be able to do this all by yourself. A lot of spouses would have thought that this was indulgent. Almost there. But James recognized that this was necessary for us to flourish as a family. It's called a Murphy bed. I know. You know that? And I'm so thankful to James for that. And I can take the dogs. You got the dogs, I got the guy? Yeah. Lead the way, Snowden. This choice that we've made together really betters us both in so many ways, which has been the case here. It's been cool. You be the leader, but don't run too far ahead. Gonna miss living here. Maggie and Chris have been an item for seven years. Well, at least we'll get to do whatever we want at home. We can have our friends over. Up till now, they've never lived together 24-7. It looks like this table gets even smaller, so we could get closer and I could feed you romantically. <laughs> They're hoping that going tiny... I can put my phone here and stuff, too. Like one book. But what do you expect? This is a tiny house. We'll make buying a home in pricey Pasadena possible. And at $425,000, do you think they put in a real oven? Smart buyers everywhere are discovering that smaller homes mean bigger lifestyles. If you've got what it takes to live in 500 square feet or less, ingenuity rules and freedom follows. That's tiny living. Chris and I met in middle school, uh, sixth grade. She didn't like me at first, but I kept chasing and chasing, and we're dating for seven years now. I think he was my best guy friend ever since then. Chris and Maggie's high school romance continued all the way through college. After graduating, they both moved back in with their families in Pasadena. Now in their mid-20s, Chris is an aspiring restaurant chef. And Maggie's learning the real estate ropes from Chris's mom, Josephine, who's a veteran agent in the Pasadena area. I'm excited for Maggie and Chris to be buying something together and moving in together. Can you open this up and get a plate? One of the things keeping them at home is that Pasadena's an expensive place to buy. It's really hard for younger people to um, be able to afford buying a home. So now they are trying to go tiny because that will fit their budget. I think the main thing is just like a nice kitchen, you know, for Chris. <laughs> yeah, nice kitchen, yeah. comfortable. Mm -hmm. And That's a nice so backyard for Bobo. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Chris and I might not see eye to eye on the style of the house. He's more into traditional homes with more character. But I like modern homes that have like a clean and updated look. So you know my brother's a pretty messy guy, right? Like, he never cleans his room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Investing in this tiny house is going to be a big step for us. He also snores really loud at night. Oh, I know. <laughs> We'd be pouring all our life savings into it. You know, once we do it, there's no going back. So your budget is about 400000 What size are you looking for? I'm looking for about 450 square feet. Too small. I think we need 650 square feet. I would like a great outdoor space for Bobo and a personal home office. Maggie wants to be within walking distance of both their families, but Chris isn't sold. Well, Ma, I don't know. I love you guys, but I don't want to be that close. You know, we are moving out. You're a bad son. You're supposed to want to live close to them. Josephine's agreed to lead the search. For budget reasons, she knows that she'll need to stay clear of the trendy area around Pasadena's famous Rose Bowl and also the neighborhoods near the Old Town Shopping District. But a little over a mile east of Pasadena's landmark City Hall is a residential neighborhood she thinks might work. The first house I'm showing you today is the bungalow. Nice, it's a cute name. Yeah, the good thing is the location is close to both families. Oh, that's nice. The price is 400000 which is right on budget. Awesome. 
and the size is about 450 square feet. Oh, wow. Look, you got high ceiling. Yeah, ceilings are nice. Some beautiful hardwood floors. Wow, it doesn't look small. This couch is awesome. Look, I can put my drinks here and my food. Look, I can watch the basketball game right here. It only fits two of us. Like, where would your brother sit or our friends? There's no space for them. The bungalow is a little too small. Yeah, you can sit over there. We're all family. We're all close. We can pull up chairs, sit on each other's laps. You know, we don't care. This is nice. Same chair as over there. The furniture is included in this price. We don't have a lot of extra money to put into furniture or repairs. Any money saved is a good thing. Nice wood desk. Yeah, this I like. The table's nice, and I get to put my laptop here. There's a lot of light coming in. But you're just sitting here watching TV, so I can't even concentrate. I think we can make it work. And look, there's even an awesome fireplace. You can use it and cozy up and watch some movies here. Yeah. So, Mom, what's up there? Oh, it's a loft. This is pretty nice. What's up there? Two beds. There's a lot of space up here. We can use it for storage. You could use it as a guest room when your sister comes. Or for you and your brother. Yeah, or it could be a man cave. Let's go see the master bedroom. This is nice. There's a full-size bed. The lighting is nice in here. A lot of windows, but this bedroom seems a little small. But what do you expect? This is a tiny house. <laughs> We have a fan. I can put my phone here and stuff, too. Like one book? <laughs> well, look, mm. that closet's pretty big. You can put a lot of stuff here. My clothes would be like this much, and you get like this little area. It's fine by me. I don't have much. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look at this bathroom inside a suite here. Wow, this is nice. Well, look at this tile. Everything's updated. Nice toilet. It's clean, modern. Big shower. There's a lot of space here, too. Yeah. Don't you think this is enough room for you now? Yeah, I think the bathroom's a good size. Well, let's go see the kitchen. Chris, you're a cook, so I know it's important for you. Yeah, this looks great. Let's go see the kitchen. Big. It's roomier than I expected. Chris and his girlfriend, Maggie, are looking to buy their first home together in Pasadena, California, and they want to go tiny. All right, a lot of storage. Look, I can put all my spices in here. There's a ton of space in here. Look at that. This is a great use of space. Mm -hmm. Four burner stove, oven. It's a little small, but we can still make do with it. As a cook who's used to working in small kitchens and tight spaces, the bungalow has all the space that I need to make good meals. If I stand here and do my work, can you stand here and do the dishes at the same time? Wait, there's no dishwasher? The only thing that's missing in the kitchen is a dishwasher. It's an honor to be his dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, there's a fridge, there's a freezer, plenty of space. You got your dining room table here as well. This is nice. You can enlarge it when you have more people. So when you want to have friends over, you can open it up. This is a good size for us. The kitchen is nice. If you can still cook yummy meals for me, then I'm happy with it. Nice yard, a trellis. We can have dinners out here on summer nights. With our friends and family. I like it. The barbecue and the table outside are great. You know, you get kicked back, have a beer, some burgers, some steaks. I think it's a really nice addition to the house. It's just, there's no grass. Where is Bobo going to do his business? That's a good question. But the kitchen's awesome. The price is great. I mean, it's right on budget. I mean, it was cute, but it was just too small. I think the space is fine. The bedroom's roomy. The living room was nice. There's a desk there for you to do work. You know, there's a nice bathroom. It's clean. But guests would have to walk into our bedroom to use it, so I don't know. The loft is a nice option for storage or, you know, having guests over. It can be my man cave. Yeah, it better be your man cave, because there's no space downstairs. Josephine has Maggie in mind with her next house pick, which is also in East Pasadena. Hey, guys, we're here at the Olive. Wow, what a cute name. And the good thing is, it's very close to both families. Perfect. And size-wise, it's 650 square feet. Yes. The price is 425000 What? 
So it's too big, too expensive, and too close for me, Mom. Let's go inside and see it first. This is nice. This is a nice living room. Got wood floors, plenty of natural light. And look at the couch. You can sit more people here. At nighttime, it can even turn into a sleeper. Go try it. Uh, it's nice and comfortable. Yeah, this is comfy. It's pretty roomy, too. I can invite more friends. I can have a beer. I can enjoy the game. I'm going to take this seat. I can, like, enjoy a book here. And did you see the ceiling? They're unique. This is nice, Chris. It's nice, but we have no money to spend on anything else. Here's a buffet. You can put all your cookwares in it. And you got a six-seater dining table. This table looks very pretty. Yeah, I have to admit, the character in this house is pretty nice. I mean, the floors are nice, the walls, this table. But honestly, I'm a little concerned. How are we going to be able to afford this? Chris is right, but I want us to love it. And it's going to be a great investment. And I just don't want to think too much about the money. Let's see the kitchen. That's a huge sink and dishwasher. I guess you're off the hook this time, Maggie. This is good. Yeah, well, there's a lot of storage. It's a nice and big sink. Convenient. So we got a refrigerator. Yeah, full size. Yeah, there's a ton of counter space. And a ton of drawers. Tons of storage. Washer, dryer. We can do our laundry here. A four-top burner, microwave oven. And at $425,000 in all this counter space, you think they put in a real oven. So as a cook, you know, I do a lot of my cooking in the oven. I do a lot of baking. Without one, you know, it's going to be really difficult. Look, here's the master bedroom, pocket doors, full-size bed. Wow, this is a good-sized bedroom. <sighs> yeah, if you don't get any fatter, this could work well. <laughs> Two end tables. And you got more storage underneath the bed. Wow. Oh, yeah. You put a lot of stuff down here. Yeah, great use of space. Behind you is the walkthrough closet. Oh, yeah, this is great. I could totally use this. Works for me. And here is the bathroom. Wow. It's a little small, but it's clean and modern. Yeah, there's a nice bathtub. There's two shower heads. Uh-huh. Yeah, Some and the storage. lighting, too. Nice sink. And this door goes through to the second bedroom. Second bedroom? We have the sofa bed in the living room. There's really no reason to have that second bedroom. Wow, this is nice. Second bedroom. Here's a twin bed, and it has more storage underneath. Wow, oh, yeah, very efficient. Maggie and Chris are in the middle of touring a classy 650-square-foot 1922 home in Pasadena, California. But it's pricey and does have a few quirks. Here's another desk. It folds out. I just wish the view was a little better. Maybe like over there with the light. The desk is facing the wall, so we had to figure something out. If you want to put an office in here, you know, it's more money that we don't have. Maggie's great, but sometimes she's a little irresponsible when it comes to certain things, especially like money. Here's the patio deck and nice furniture. Yeah, this is a lot of space. Some nice astroturf, mm -hmm. but we can run around. But it looks like you can see like 10 people. Are we opening a restaurant here? And also, this fence is kind of low, and there's a big street right there. It's not that private. Well, I think that's why those hedges are growing. It's true, but just overall, I think, you know, the space is bigger than we need. I think this is fine. It's a big space with a lot of character. You know, the living room is good for entertaining. The dining room table is big, but do we need all that space if it's just going to be me and you? Definitely a bonus for both of us. Our friends and family are going to come over. It's perfect. Well, the kitchen at the Olive was nice, but there's no oven. And if we're going over budget, you know, we don't have any money to put anything in. So I don't want to do it. The next house in Josephine's tour is a 15-minute drive away in an area of Pasadena called North Central. She thinks this one might just be a happy medium. Guys, we're here at the Casa, a Spanish bungalow. It's about 15 minutes drive from both families. The size is 550 square feet. It's just right in between what you both wanted. How much is it? 350,000. 350,000, that's cheap. Yeah. Wow. Oh, nice, it's spacious. It got 
got a couch that sits three people, can turn into a bed at night time. It's good. Oh, look at this. I can invite some friends over to watch basketball. I think I can sit four. Well, there's another chair over there. You can try it. There's storage in here. Yeah. And there's plenty of storage in the entertainment system. Yeah, we can put our games there, your books. The furniture has some storage space, and there's a sofa bed, so it's a nice way to maximize the space in a tiny house. So what do you think, Maggie? How does this feel to you? Pretty good. A lot of light coming in. You know, when our friends and family come over, they actually have space. It looks pretty nice, too. The living space can fit like seven, eight people comfortably, so I think it's great for entertaining. Well, let's take a look at the room behind you. Nice. Well, I know we're on their budget, but do we need all this room, Maggie? I could use it. I can work here. And then when you're loud with your friends out there, this would be like a nice little retreat. And if not as a home office, this could be like a second bedroom for our guests. Well, kids, let's go see the kitchen. OK. It's a nice kitchen. Plenty of cabinet space and full-size appliances. Look, we got a big four-burner stove top. Yeah, a full-size oven. Big fridge. Freezer. Lots of storage. More storage on this side, a lot of counter space. As a chef, I think I could work in this kitchen. It has everything I need. Although I don't think there's a dishwasher in this house. We're coming in under budget, and we'll have extra money to spend on furniture or appliances. Here's a table for two. This might be too small. We can't have friends and family over, because they won't even fit. That's true. It looks like this table gets even smaller, so we could get closer, and I could feed you romantically. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go see the bedroom. It's a little bigger than the bungalows. Yeah, this bed's nice. I think it's a queen. The storage underneath, too. Mm-hmm. We actually get bedside tables this time. Yeah. I think this is the closet. And there are two rods. I get to put, like, my clothes on, like, one and a half, and you get the other half. It's all yours, Maggie. Glad that you know that. <laughs> well, one thing I don't really like is the windows. I think just outside is like our neighbor. and There's not a lot of privacy, huh? With the view like that, we probably have to close off the curtains and it just make the room, you know, a lot smaller and darker. Not a very pretty backyard. That's true. Well, let's see the bathroom. It's a decent sized bathroom. Chris and Maggie's tiny house hunt has been transformed by the Casa, a 550-square-foot house that hits the checklist and comes in 50K under budget. It's a little dated. But we're under budget, so we have some money to fix it up. Yeah, that's right. There's not a lot of storage, maybe just a little storage under the sink, so we could maybe build some shelves on the wall. Well, here's the backyard. Yeah, it's a lot of space. Kind of a dock run up here. This looks more like an extension of the driveway. It's not really like the play area we wanted for Bobo. Yeah, there's no grass. We'll have to fix that up. Good thing we're under budget. But I like the office space, and the living space is nice. And the kitchen's good. There's full appliances. Maggie and Chris have seen three tiny houses in their hometown of Pasadena, California, and now they need to put their cards on the table. All right, guys, you need to make a decision. I wasn't overly impressed with the Casa. House 3 comes in at 550 square feet and is the least expensive at $350,000. It's got a decent kitchen with a full-size stove and fridge, but it's a 15-minute drive to their families. The outdoor space wasn't very attractive. Even though we're under budget, it would be a lot of work to fix that up. You'd have to build up like a whole wall because you see the neighbor. All right, the Casa is gone. Which one do you pick, Maggie? I like the olive. House two is the biggest at 650 square feet and the most expensive at 425,000. It's a roomy vintage home, but leaves Chris without an oven. The outdoor space is just beautiful and it's walking distance from you and my parents. For me, I choose the bungalow. House one is right on budget at $400,000 and is the smallest at 450 square feet. The kitchen was great, I had everything I needed. I think it's a perfect combination of size and price. Everything was just too tight in the bungalow. Olive gives us personal space and space for, you know, our friends and family when they come over. I just think it's crazy to spend $25,000 over budget for a house that's bigger than we need. 
I think we can really enjoy that house. Bobo will like it, we'll all love it. It's a lot of money. I mean, where's the money coming from? I think Maggie is right. If it's gonna make you feel any better, I'm gonna waive my commission, okay? Really? Well, I guess we'll go with the olive. Yay! It's gonna be the best choice we've ever made. I love you. I love you too. Maggie and Chris close on the olive in under 60 days. A month later, they're all moved in. Go, Bubba. Come on. When we started looking for our tiny house, our budget was around $400,000. And we ended up spending $425,000. And I didn't really want to do that at the time. But now that we took the plunge, I feel like we made a great investment. Come on. And I was right, Chris. 650 square feet is perfect for us. I think it's the best decision we've ever made. The outdoor space is perfect for him. After having dated Maggie for seven years and finally moving in, you know, it's kind of what we expected. Oh, you sis. We're just living life now. We're more independent, and we're learning how to take care of each other. Do you like this kitchen? Yeah, I mean, everything's great about it, except I still don't have that oven. I think I'm going to put it right here when we get the money. Chris is still cooking the same good food. And there's a dishwasher, so I don't have to do any dishes. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for coming. I believe going tiny is the right choice for them. Thank you for having us. With a smaller home, they have less upkeep, less cleaning, and less expenses. Having our families within walking distance actually isn't quite the problem that I thought it would be in the beginning. Um, it's actually quite nice. There's a lot of perks. Sometimes our families will bring us food, they'll walk our dog, and it's really helpful, actually. He thought this house was too big, but look how it turned out. It's perfect, right? Yeah, nice mm -hmm. Thank you. Sometimes when I'm sitting out there, you know, I'm having a beer, I'm having a drink, I'm relaxing. I'm thinking about, you know, when am I going to open my own restaurant one day? I believe Chris and Maggie will find their happiness for many, many years in this new tiny home.